on an otherwise normal, sunny day in the port of Los Angeles, a liquid drips slowly on the back of a cargo container. Ordinarily, nobody would pay much attention, but containers like these are supposed to contain dry goods. What's more, these are definitely not ordinary times. When a cargo handler notices a strong chemical smell, he sounds the alarm. Is it just water? Or might it be something much more lethal? Perhaps a substance being used in the sort of carefully planned biochemical attack the world has regrettably seen before. On to the San Pedro Harbor. We've got one victim down with the potential of a chemical leak at the location. There's only one way to be sure. These are the people who risk their own lives to investigate. They have the latest in protective gear, the best in chemical testing technology, and the training to make it work. This is the hazmat team. It's up to them to find out whether this will continue to be another ordinary day or something far worse. with their safety gear and high-tech equipment, the hazmat officers approach the scene. They monitor the outside of the container before entering. Can you hear me on Simplex? Roger that. Hazmat group sub entry team, it looks like we uh, have a small liquid leak. Passenger side rear door. They check radiation levels and monitor the air in case there's a risk of fire. Next on the checklist is to determine whether any chemical warfare agents are present. An armed suspect is easily recognized, but an invisible threat of this nature is a completely different enemy. The readings from all the instruments are checked and transferred back to the command post. The results show that the operation can continue safely, but not for long. As soon as the door is opened, the equipment registers something the team was hoping not to see and all the signs suddenly point to danger. Elevation on LEL. Roger on the elevated uh, LEL. At the leaky container in the port area, the team's equipment has indicated a serious hazard. One of the officers carries a portable safety monitor, or PSM, which is part of the lifeline system. The small monitor is connected to the various detectors used by the officers near the spill. It relays all the data and readings wirelessly to a portable computer located at the command post. The atmosphere's hazardous composition is monitored while the officers concentrate on the task at hand. The system also serves as a data storage medium and status display center where all the information gathered at the site is monitored by the rest of the crew as well as scientists. This allows them to weigh in on the dangers faced by the responders. With a high level of gas detected, the hazmat officers are told to ventilate the area. So the door is left open and the air within the confined space of the truck dissipates into the atmosphere. But while that is happening, a spark could ignite an explosion so it's still not safe for the officers to get too close to the spill. You guys are on air exactly 16 minutes right now. Come on out, come on out, come on out. In a suburb of Los Angeles, an LAPD detective opens his mail before heading off to work. A white powder spills out of an envelope. His eyes start to itch and his throat burns. Yeah, Matt, there's a LA detective in D3. He just received in his residence a letter with some suspicious materials inside of it. Mostly he says there's a powder that came out of an envelope and he's experiencing some minor symptoms. We want you to head up there right now. 
This RTAC, or Rapid Treatment Assessment Kit, contains all the equipment necessary to analyze the mysterious white powder. Following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the LAPD hazmat unit responded to over 1,500 calls for assistance related to unknown powders or substances. In all of these cases, responders spent a significant amount of time trying to determine the threat level, if any, at each location. RTAC is designed to help technical responders quickly assess the nature of a suspicious and unknown substance. By using chemical indicators and analytical instruments right on site, the hazmat team's work is done in a much more timely fashion. What do you think? The microscope included in the RTAC kit is an essential piece of equipment used to assess the threat of an unknown substance. It allows responders to examine the physical structure of the substance and draw conclusions about its nature. Post 9-11, the demand for new equipment has increased significantly. What's out there in technology is limitless. We've learned that we need to reach out to those that are manufacturers and, and designers and, and researchers, both at university and industry, uh, to drive the innovations and, to, and drive the technology to fit our needs now. David Lamensdorf of Safe Environment Engineering heeded the call. The Lifeline system is soon to be launched. We'll go ahead and get this built up. The incident and command control system incorporated with the Lifeline system will set new standards for response to life-threatening incidents. The system consists of a handheld computer and integrates multiple communication platforms. Similar to satellite or wireless technology, this system gathers data such as air quality. It takes photographs and live video from the scene of an incident and it dispatches all the information to the appropriate agencies in real time.